Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Sky High Online. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to replace your joystick on an Xbox One Elite controller. If you have a regular controller, the process is practically the same. First, I'm going to open up html5gamepad.com on the computer. Then I'm going to grab the micro USB cable and connect the USB side to the computer and the micro USB side to the controller. Then just press any button. As you can see, this controller has stick drift on the left analog stick without doing anything to it. So this is obvious cause for replacement. Now before we start the repair, let's go over some of the tools that we'll need. We'll need a soldering iron, solder, flux, a wick, a solder sucker, cutting pliers, a plastic controller grip prying tool, a T8 security torque screwdriver, a T6 torque screwdriver, a precision or regular screwdriver, regular pliers, something to hold the motherboard, something to clean the flux, and one of the most important tools, a multimeter that can measure resistance. If you do not have a multimeter or one that works, I know a way you can get this exact one for free. If there's a Harbor Freight store around you, all you need to do is purchase anything in the store. It can literally be something for a dollar and present this coupon. I'll leave a link in the description below for the coupon as well as all of the tools and guides that we will be using in this video. Some of you are probably wondering, why in the world would I need a multimeter? Before I answer that question, let me give you a brief rundown on what Microsoft does with their joysticks and the problem we face when trying to replace them. Microsoft controller joysticks come out of the factory different from one another, meaning when you measure the resistances of each joystick, you'll notice that they aren't the same. If they were to simply install every joystick as is, almost every one of them would be off-center. To correct this, Microsoft calibrates each one with software to center them. Unfortunately, they don't give us access to the software. This is probably because they want us to buy brand new controllers. Fortunately, I found a way around this to manually calibrate them, mainly by swapping around the potentiometers and measuring them with a multimeter. It's a bit of extra work, but in my opinion, it is totally worth it. Without further ado, let's move on with the instructions. Now, let's take the controller apart. Let's first remove the hand grips. Then the battery cover and batteries if they're still in it. Here is the warranty sticker that we will be removing to get to one of the five screws. You could punch a hole right through it if you don't mind voiding the warranty or aesthetics. If you have a heat gun, it'll make this job a little bit easier. And you don't have to peel it all the way back, just enough to get access to the screw. We will be using the T8 security torque screwdriver to remove all of these five screws. Then let's remove the front cover and the profile selector. It's time to pry apart the back plate. I like to pry near the headphone jack, should just pop right up. There will be a cord connecting the back plate on the Elite controller. Just lift up on the little black tab to disconnect it. I'll be removing the thumb grips now. I like to remove the cord completely. Now it's time to remove the eight wires that connect the rumble packs. Word of caution, if you're a daredevil like me and just use your hands to hold the wires, be very careful. 
you could burn yourself. And I assume no liability should you do that. Remove the rumble packs. Let's grab the T6 Torx screwdriver and remove the two screws on the motherboard on each side of it. A little tip, you can place these screws on the thumb grips. They are magnetic. Now we can remove the motherboard from the front plate. It's time to remove the old joystick. If you have a desoldering iron or a heat gun, you can most certainly use those. However, I will not be showing how to use those in this video, as most of us are only going to have a soldering iron. When it comes to removing an old joystick from an Elite controller with just a soldering iron, there's pretty much only one way to do this because of the extremely small through holes. Luckily, that is what I'll be showing you how to do today. Now, keep in mind that if you have a regular controller, you may be able to get away with desoldering each of the 14 points with a solder sucker and wick. And if that doesn't work, what I'll be showing you likely will. Let's get to it. We'll be taking apart the old joystick and removing it piece by piece. To do this, let's first pry open the potentiometers and remove the little black piece inside. Then chop up the metal frame on each corner to get it into four pieces. Two of these aren't connected to the motherboard, so we can remove those. Each potentiometer has three pins, so I'm going to cut each one into three pieces. The button has four pins, so I'm going to cut three of those as high as I can and leave one. This just makes that one a little easier to remove later. The two metal frame pieces still standing up have two pins each, so let's cut those as well. Now we should have all 14 pins freed up and ready to be removed. We'll flip the board over and get the soldering iron heated up. Then with the pliers, grab onto whichever piece you are removing and heat the corresponding pin. Once the solder is melted, we can gently remove that piece. It's important to be patient and not pull too hard, as doing so can damage the through hole, which wouldn't be very good. One tip in removing them is adding new solder and flux to each point. Once all the pieces are removed, it's now time to get rid of the old solder. I love to use the solder pult, it's really good, but any other solder remover or wick should work totally fine. Before we put on a new joystick, we'll first need to measure the resistances of its potentiometers. This step is extremely important, so don't forget it, because if you do, you won't be able to know what corrections you'll need to make later on to get it centered. Here I'm just grabbing the joysticks and potentiometers out of the package and grabbing one of them. On your multimeter, set it to ohms. If you're using the Harbor Freight model, you'll need to select the 20k ohms setting. Now that we got everything, it's time to take the measurements. You can refer to the joystick potentiometer value sheet for which measurements are which. Right here I'm taking the first measurement on the x-axis potentiometer, 
and recording the results. Then I'm taking the second measurement and recording that one. Simply subtract the two measurements to get the diff value. We'll do the same thing on the y-axis. And whether the diff value is positive or negative does matter, so be sure to double check your calculations. It is worth noting that at this point you could swap the potentiometers and wipers around to get the diff values close to zero. This would give you a higher chance of not needing to change the joysticks again. Just make sure that when you do this, that you write down the values that you end up with. Now that we wrote down those values, let's get this guy onto the motherboard. You may need to move the pins around to get it to fit. What I like to do is solder one pin first. Then heat it back up and move the joystick as flush as it can go. And this should keep it flush and into place. Then simply solder the rest. Clean it up if you like. Let's get this back onto the front plate. Luckily we don't have to put the whole controller back together to test it. We just simply need the motherboard and the front plate. It's time to go back to the HTML5 gamepad tester and find out the results. If you're one of the lucky ones, you may not even need nor want to change joysticks again. It is recommended that if the values are greater than 0.1 in any direction to change the joystick. However, stick drift does not technically occur until about 0.18. To get the new values that we need to get closer to the center, we simply need to fill out the HTML5 gamepad tester result sheet. First mark where the dot is on the bullseye. It's good to have as a reference point if you ever needed to double check the values that you wrote down. Then plug the X and Y values in. The Y value is especially important here because for whatever reason, the tester shows it as the opposite of what it really is. So if it shows positive on the tester, write down a negative value on the sheet. And if it shows negative on the tester, write down a positive value. Then put these values into the next equation. We'll add this to the original diff value that we got from the joystick we put in. And now we get what we've been searching for, the difference value that gets the joystick close to the center. It's time to head back over to the workbench and remove the joystick again. If you're able to remove the joystick in one piece, that's great, you'll be able to reuse it. And if you can't, it's not a big deal. That's why there are extra joysticks in the kit. Once the joystick is removed, we'll whip out the old joystick potentiometer value sheet. This is just one way to find the diff values we're looking for. You could certainly swap around all the potentiometers and wipers until you get one that's close enough. But for this demonstration, I'm going to write down all of the values for each of the potentiometers in the kit and choose the best ones. It's important when putting on a potentiometer that the flat side of the wiper faces upwards. They will not work if it is upside down. Also, after putting the potentiometer onto the joystick, move the joystick around so it seats correctly. Once I filled out the sheet, I went ahead and picked the two that were closest to the diff to center values 
and put them onto the joystick. It should be said that this procedure is not perfect because there are some small variables here and there when taking the readings. But for the most part, if you follow the instructions up to this point, it should work out pretty well. Now that we've got our new joystick, we can put it onto the motherboard. And back together with the front plate. Then back to the computer. Looks like I did it right, and I'm within point 0.1 on each axis. We can now finish up by putting the controller back together. It's basically the reverse order of taking it apart. Insert the headphone jack with the gold pins facing up. Screw both T6 torque screws back in. Then install the cord if you have an Elite controller. The bigger rumble pack goes on the left and the smaller one goes on the right. Solder all 8 wires back into the motherboard. The gray and red wires are positive and the black wires are negative. Connect the cord to the back plate and put the front and back plates together. When doing this make sure the battery terminals go through the back plate first. And once that's through hold down the RT and LT buttons to help it fit back into place. Install the thumb grips and profile selector. Place the cover on top and screw all five T8 security torque screws back in. Install the hand grips. the thumb grips, the d-pad, and finally the battery cover. Job well done. If this video was any help at all, please consider giving it a like, and we'll see you around.